Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Stops Buying Stuff. My face may be familiar to some of you. I did have a YouTube channel before, I had a blog before. I kind of had it for quite a long time. I had started it when I literally had just left high school and kind of carried on through the years, never doing it quite consistently and never doing it exactly the way that I wanted to do it. Last year, I was sort of forced into taking a break. It wasn't really a pleasant situation, but it forced me to stop, reflect on what I'd been creating, why I didn't like it, because I was never happy with what I was doing on my old channel. Really reevaluate why did I want to do YouTube, what was I doing before, and what did I want to put out there. As much as it wasn't pleasant, it kind of worked out quite well, because I feel quite motivated to have this new channel, have a fresh start, and have really clear boundaries of what I want to discuss and not discuss. That will mean that if you are on my channel and you like what I'm talking about in one video, that will be related to the other videos in the channel for the most part. I might do like a random vlog every so often or something, you know, if I'm on holiday or whatever, but for the most part my channel will have a theme, whereas my previous channel was very much just a lifestyle channel and I kind of covered loads of different topics, which is great if you liked all those different topics, but if you were only in it for one type of content, it, your topic might only come up once a month or something. So, new channel! And in case you can't tell from the fact that the new channel is called Rose Stops Buying Stuff, the focus of this channel is going to be on my continuing journey to stopping shopping, dealing with my spending addiction, becoming better with money and just stuff related to that really. That sounds so professional, doesn't it? Stuff related to that. 2020, new decade, and my project for 2020, which is going to be the focus of my channel, is that I am doing my no buy budget year. I feel like I need a snappier title. If you did follow my old channel, you will know in 2018, I went on a beauty spending ban for what I thought would be a year. I had a problem before that. I definitely did. My mental health took a really big dip in 2017 and I shopped as a way of a self-soothing and avoiding confronting things by filling my mind and my time with this pursuit of finding things to want and tracking them down and obsessing about them and purchasing them and b buying into the promise that these things held for me in my mind. If I wasn't happy in myself that this jar of moisturiser would make my skin grey and that would make me really happy. That was that was where it all went quite wrong because it focused very much on beauty, that was definitely where it went out of control but I've always been a shopper, I've always been a spender and the habits that I had meant that when my mental health dipped like that they were able to go very extreme but the basis of those habits and the possibility for that to happen, foundations for that were laid well before it actually did happen. 2018, one year of no new beauty related stuff, great, no problems, didn't struggle, was so overwhelmed with what I had, I inventoried it, I took note of the value of what I owned and I gave myself a really big fright and it, it was what I needed, it was great and actually I'm still glad that I started with a very specific category. But I thought one year of not buying any new beauty stuff, I was like I'm gonna end this year with so much money in my bank and have so much less stuff and have used up so much stuff and my problems were so big, I had hoarded so much and bought so much. One year did make a dent but I think I used up around $4,000 worth of beauty products in a year from a stash that was worth about $30,000 and there was stuff that I hadn't even properly counted into that because there was stuff that I was waiting to like film for my old channel that I was like it's a good way to manage bringing it in if I once I've filmed it, it goes on to the inventory. It was what I could cope with at the time, so I have no regrets about doing it, but it did not solve the issues. I did not finish 2018 a millionaire with minimal things. In 2019, I continued my beauty ban. I did not introduce a new ban or a new restriction on anything else, but I thought I've stopped spending on beauty in 2018, therefore my money must be going on clothing and accessories, fashion things basically. So last year, I tracked all my fashion purchases and I've tracked the quantity and I've tracked what I spent. What I was forced to kind of confront at the end of last year was that yes I spend a lot of money on clothing and accessories and yes I bring far too many in and that's also something I need to tackle, hence tackling it this year, but it was not as much of my money as I thought that I was putting into fashion. Which meant I had this 
huge deficit of money with no real concept of where it was going and that brings me to where I am today at the start of 2020 well it's actually like midway through January um I kind of wanted to pick my project and outline my rules and do it for myself before introducing it to YouTube I knew I wasn't quite ready to give up YouTube entirely I knew I wanted to come back with a fresh channel and a fresh start and share that journey again it's really good for me because it helps me it helps me stay accountable but I would be accountable to myself anyway that's not as much the issue but I think talking through things on camera to explain them to you guys helps me work through it better in my head to understand myself and I know when I was doing decluttering videos and things there are things that I would have probably just kept if I'd just been doing it myself or I would have got like kind of bored halfway through and been like I can't be bothered to watching any more lipsticks like whatever I've got rid of five great the rest can stay whereas doing it on YouTube adds that other dimension to it that I really benefit from I knew I wanted to do that but I wanted to make sure that I was ready to do it first and foremost for myself and that YouTube would be that added dimension and not doing it to make YouTube content because I do think in the run up to the absolute diabolical spending of 2017 the habits that were there had always been there I've always been a shopper that is nothing to do with YouTube but when I had my YouTube channel before hauls get the best views there's there was no two ways about it if you wanted your channel to grow and you wanted views you had to do a haul that was the only way to get people into your channel because there's that generic thing about hauls where it doesn't massive the person whose taste it is that shopping matters but the person doesn't ma massively matter so if you just want to know what's new in Topshop and somebody's got a video up you don't need to really care about them or their opinion on anything because you just want to see the items so you're much more likely to watch a haul video for somebody that you don't know and have never engaged with before than you are going to watch somebody's you know something that's a bit more in depth and a bit more personal to them so I think that also didn't help and there are things I know that I definitely bought in the past because I was like oh I've got four things to do a haul video with that's not enough I'll just go find more things to buy and I was doing that to feed my YouTube content with my old channel and I needed to take the time and make sure that if I was coming back to YouTube with this content that it was because I was doing this for myself and then sharing it was what's that extra dimension and not that I was letting the fact I wanted to do YouTube content dictate what I was doing with my life. That definitely happened before and that definitely wasn't the right way for things to happen. So basically my new channel is going to be about my no buy and my budget and how I cope with that and the ways that I find to work around that and hopefully finding joy in the things I already own. I don't really want to totally go into what happened last year but I had a huge what I considered invasion of privacy and when I confronted the person about it I was told well you're a blogger so you've got no right to have an issue with it when somebody engages with you and follows you on all your social media. It really bothered me I had to really take that step back and think how much of myself am I sharing and most of the time it is genuinely nice people that are interacting with it but when you've got somebody that is not so nice or that you would like not to be in your life anymore there's a lot of you available to that person and some people will take that as entitlement to as much of you as they want and that's so not okay and the fact that I'm a blogger doesn't make that okay so that we're all clear but it did really underline for me how much of my inner self I do share online and what that can do in the wrong hands. I am making it very clear that this new channel yes it'll be about fashion and beauty and I won't be buying things so it won't be about what I'm buying but it will be about how I'm utilising things, how I'm getting better wear out things, decluttering, all that kind of stuff, anything that's relevant to living on a budget and by budget I mean fun budget so if you're looking for somebody to budget your weekly shop with like that's not what this is and no buy and that's what my new channel is going to be so if that's not you it's time for us to part way as creator and viewer and I'm so sorry to see you go but we're both going to be happier in the long run and if it is you then please do consider subscribing to my new channel and yeah I'm really looking forward to creating more content for it. So now that that's out the way of what my channel is going to be about let's talk about the details of this year's project, my no buy and my budget. I've got my rules on my phone so if I'm looking down 
um, that's that's what I'm looking at. The no buy, long story short, no new fashion items, no new beauty items, no new homewares, no new fan items, by which I mean no more Disney store hauls basically, um, and no new stationery, which is quite a niche one but definitely somewhere that I know that I fritted a lot of money. Does sometimes cross over with fan merchandise as well, which is, you know, it's the worst of both worlds coming together in a way that takes all my money. Nothing new, not that hard. The exception to what I'm allowed to buy, I'm allowed to buy books. However, my books must come out of my budget, which I'll discuss later. And I'm hoping the fact that I am making that part of my budget will make me less likely to impulse buy. Books are the only thing that I am allowed and whether they are Kindle books or physical books, I have to count them out of my budget, so books. Exceptions to the no buy, I am allowed replacements as long as they are genuine replacements. So for example, if I run out of shampoo completely, I can buy a new bottle of shampoo. I'm definitely not going to run out of shampoo, but it's a simple way to, to talk about it. However, if I run out of my specific bottle of shampoo that I like using, I am not allowed to replace that bottle because I finished that branded bottle because I have other shampoos to use. So it's got to be a genuine replacement. Something has got to go out and there is nothing else to fill its place for me to be able to replace it. So I am allowed replacements, but I, I don't see it being a huge thing that I'm buying. A couple of core skincare items, that's really all I foresee buying replacements wise. In terms of gift cards, they're not so much an exception because nobody really gives me gift cards. I got one for Christmas, which is why I had to think about it. If I get a gift card, I'm allowed to spend it freely with no restrictions, but I cannot add to it. So if I have got for example, for Christmas I got an ASOS gift card that was worth £100. If I saw a quote on ASOS that was £150, I can't get it. I can't put £50 to it. However, if I am using a gift card for a replacement, and again, I can't really see this happening, but I feel like I need the rule so that I can't find a loophole. If I have gift card and I'm using it for a replacement, so I don't have a Space NK gift card, but if I did and I was buying another serum or something um, and the serum was £70 and the gift card was for you know £30 I could put that extra 40 to it um, because it's a replacement which would be allowed. So I'm allowed to top it up if I'm using it for a replacement, if I'm using it for something that I wouldn't be allowed to spend my money on under my no buy I cannot add to it. Holidays, when I'm on holiday and I'm defining a holiday as being something where I am away from home for two nights or more. And specifically the reason I'm defining that as that is because in February, March and April, I either have booked or have planned to book overnights away. And I don't want those overnights to become a way for me to basically buy things, especially because I've got three in a row at the start of the year, um, it would just completely defeat the purpose. So two nights or more makes a holiday. If I'm away for one night, I'm not allowed to shop. More than that, I'm allowed to shop. Part of the reason for that, and I might discuss this more in another video, is that when I'm on holiday I tend to shop really well. I tend to make really good decisions on holiday about what I'm buying. I was in London with a friend between Christmas and New Year and we were discussing it and what we kind of came to the conclusion of was that when we're in Glasgow, which is where I'm from, you get to a point where you know everything that's in every shop. You know what's available to you and you sort of know what the best thing available is. When you're on holiday there's the promise of all these unseen things that we don't have at home and it's always in the back of my mind that there might be something I might like better. It's ridiculous because really in terms of what I'm saying that I could see in person in London for example I was like oh we can go to the Dolce & Gabbana shop which we don't have one in Glasgow. They do have a website. If I really wanted to be buying things all the time from Dolce & Gabbana I could be because I could be buying them online but I'm not because I spend far too much money frittering money away on things that I'm not actually that into when I'm at home. We were in Harrods, we were at the NARS counter and NARS had a sale on and there was lipstick called Carmen which I really like and I've liked for quite a while and it was in the limited edition Christmas packaging and it gone on to sale because it was after Christmas and I still didn't buy it and my friend was like, that's because in Glasgow you would know that sale was the best sale that was happening right now. That's the closest you're going to come to something you really want. Whereas we're on the walk-in floor at Paris right now. We have got all these other floors to discover and there's possibility. And after we've been to Harrods, 
we're going to Harvey Nichols and then we could go back to Selfridges and we can go to Liberty and we can go to all these shops that we don't have at home and you don't know what's in them yet. So I'm not too worried about shopping on holiday. I'm going to do that freely. I might end up introducing a budget or a quantity restriction of what I can buy on different holidays of different lengths, but we shall see. At the moment, holidays are an exception to the no buy. And the last exception to my no buy is that I'm allowed three gifts throughout the year. Not just random three gifts when I feel like it. A Valentine's Day gift, because I don't see why the fact that I'm single should penalise me from getting a gift. A birthday gift to myself, because I buy myself a birthday gift every year generally. And a Christmas gift to myself, which again, I buy myself something generally as a Christmas gift to myself every year. The reason for that is because I think having these three opportunities to shop in an unrestricted way will make me really think about and prioritise what I want to buy and that's the, the method of shopping that I want to get more in touch with is that one that's really considered and is really weighing up like I've got this list of however many things that I want and I can pick one which one wins and I think it'll be really interesting as well to see if you know see there's things in the wish list that ones like this would be really practical but it's a bit boring and this would be really exciting but I'm probably going to wear it like once a year or whatever if it's a ball gown for example. I think it'll be very interesting over the way that those three things appear in the year in relation to how close they are to the start of the year and how close they are to me having recently shopped and not being in the mindset of a no buy. It'll be interesting I think to see what wins each of those gifts. In terms of the gifts I can roll them forward. So say for example my birthday is in July so I can but basically February, July, December. Say my birthday which is in July comes and there's nothing I really want. I don't have to buy it in July. I can roll it forward to September when I know for example the coats will be landing and I know that I like coats and I don't really like summer clothes and even right now I'm basically seeing all these gifts as being like I'll buy clothing or shoes I might end up not buying clothing or shoes I might buy something completely different and I think it'll be so interesting to see that progression because I think that will set up what I'm going to do in 2021 because yes I have an idea at the moment and it could change over again the course of this no buy um, but I have an idea of what I want to progress onto in 2021 with my shopping habits after I do this no buy year which I think will work as a reset completely which is I think what I really need. I don't think if I tried a no buy in 2018 of this magnitude that I would have managed it. I think doing it for beauty was the right thing to do first. So this year is like my whole reset and next year I've got an idea of what I want to do. Slight sidetrack there. Um, but I could roll it forward, but I can't pull it. I could roll it after the date, but I can't pull it forward, is what I mean. So I can't buy my birthday gift in May if I see something that I want in May. I have to wait till July. So I have those three exceptions, but it's it's almost a form of torture in a way. So I'm really excited to actually see what happens with those three exceptions and what I do and what my decision making processes are around them. So I think that will be quite interesting. Uh, hopefully for you as well as just for me. So that is the no buy aspect. Now the budget aspect. I have worked out and I've not just pulled this from thin air either. I've looked at my income, I've taken away my bills, I have also taken away, I have um, two holidays that I still need to pay off and because holidays are exceptions from my no buy, my holidays are budgeted separately. So paying them off and saving up for my spending money and um, for my money for being on holiday, for food and things, um, has been worked out as well and some savings and whatever. And I have budgeted myself, once all of that is gone, with £250 a month. The £250 covers this is where it gets a bit more complicated so books as I said I'm going to allow myself to buy books but they have to come from my budget so books which are my only thing I'm allowed to purchase this year have to count from budget experiences and services experiences as in theatre tickets or um theatre tickets that's really all I can think of at the moment theatre tickets and experiences that has to come out of my budget and services such as hairdressing nails massages etc 
has to come out of my budget. These are two areas where, as I said, I got to the end of last year, had tracked all my clothing and was like, well, my money's still going somewhere that I don't know. I do think services are, and experiences, I think they're a big part of it. Because I know that if I don't have that record of, I have been walking down the street with this carrier bag after visiting that place and I know I bought this item, I literally forget that I've spent the money. So I think that's an area where quite a lot of my money is going without me realising at the moment. We went to London in May last year and I went to Blink and Selfridges and got my eyebrows done and didn't buy anything, just got my eyebrows done. And later that day when I was looking at my Monzo to see what I'd spent, I was like racking my brains to think about what I'd bought in Selfridges and I couldn't remember having like a Selfridges carrier bag and I, I had to say to my friend that I was away with, I was you know, I've spent this money and I don't know what it was. And she was like, oh, you got your eyebrows done. So it's, th there's something about not having a physical thing that makes me automatically seem to think that there's no money coming out of my account for that experience. So definitely putting them in my budget and yeah, I think that's going to eat a lot of it over the year. Socialising, so drinks, dinners, coffees, entry fees. Anything that I spend because I am with other people, I am allowed to spend, so I'm allowed to go out for dinner with my friends, but it has to come from my budget. Food on the go, which is different to food when socialising, mainly because I think I buy a lot of food at work and I really should be taking in my own lunch. I am not counting my weekly shop from this budget, that is worked out as one of my bills, and I should be buying my lunches for work when I'm at the supermarket. Lunches at work bottles of juice that I've bought on the go because you know bad for the environment anyway so I shouldn't buy them and I quite like going for dinner myself every so often <laughs> could be making that dinner at home and not buying it out so I could be saving money there but I'm choosing to do that so although it's not on the go and it's I'm sitting down in a restaurant having dinner I'm counting that in as food on the go and that all has to come out of my budget and taxes are the final thing that must come out of my budget so I'm not counting public transport out of my budget I have a zone card that gets me to work and back and any public transport that I take above that I'm not taking out of my budget but taxis are a luxury method of travel and generally if I'm taking a taxi it's because I'm either being lazy or because I've not been organized enough to get out the door on time so that has to come from my budget. What my budget doesn't cover, my weekly shop, health and safety products, so medication's not coming out of my budget, obviously, um, but where there's a slight caveat here. Um, I wear glasses, so I've got contact lenses in just now. If my prescription changes, I will need new glasses this year. Even if my prescription doesn't change, I need to get prescription sunglasses. I don't have any, and when I was in holiday, when I was in Florida um, in December last year, there, even though it was December, there was days that my eyes were really sore because when my eyes dry out when I'm on holiday I can't wear my contact lenses so I have to wear my normal glasses and they don't protect me from the sun. So I do need to get some before I go on holiday this year but I can only buy one pair of sunglasses and one pair of new glasses if my prescription changes. I cannot use this as a means of buying five pairs of sunglasses and six new pairs of glasses it's one of each. After that they would count as wardrobe additions and they would come under the rules of my no buy. Technology, I don't see this being an issue. I'm not a gadget person, I don't care about technology, I'm not spending money on technology every month. I don't really have any intentions of making any technology purchases this year. I will upgrade my phone at some point but again my phone bill comes out as a bill and I'm on a contract phone so that will be worked into the cost of that bill. I won't really be paying for it as such. So I don't really see myself making any technology purchases but if I do I'm not going to take them from my budget because it's not a problem area. Gifts, whether I'm self-gifting under my Valentine's birthday and Christmas rules or whether I'm buying a gift for somebody else that doesn't need to come from my budget. Replacements, so as I mentioned under my no buy, if I've got a genuine replacement to buy, that doesn't need to come from my budget. Public transport, already discussed. Not taking that from my budget, mainly because I've got my zone card which covers me in and out of Glasgow um, through the week for work, but then also is valid at the weekend. So I very rarely spend on transport anyway. Again, 
not a problem area. Netflix and currently Disney Life will become Disney Plus and Amazon Prime. I just pay them every month and I know that I get my use out of them so I'm not worried about them. They're not a problem area for me and I'm happy to just have them keep coming out without counting them as part of my budget. Bills, obviously, as said, they've been worked out they will continue to come out and holidays so as I said as well I have worked that out so that my holidays can be paid off and funded through a lump of money that I'm putting towards that purpose every month out with my budget. So I think that covers it. This might have been really boring I'm sorry but I had to be really thorough because I know myself and I'm already quite intimidated by what I'm doing and the extent of what I'm doing and I know that I will start looking for loopholes like I know myself so I had to make, I had to cover every base and make rules for situations that I don't think will happen. Like I don't really, like getting that gift card at Christmas, I've got one for ASOS and one for Waterstones. They're the first two gift cards that I've had in years. Like nobody gets me gift cards. It's very rare that I have that. So I had to come up with a rule for scenarios that probably won't happen just so that if they did, it wasn't going to make me go off track. Because the thing is, when there are so many reasons that I'm doing this, the absolute main base that it comes down to is I don't think clutter is good for my mental health. I really, really don't. I just feel stressed about the amount of stuff that I own and my space is never organised and I feel like when I'm not in an organised space and I'm, I see this as somebody who's not a naturally tidy person but I do really feel that if my space is a mess I can't focus my mind so I don't like living in clutter but I I just constantly live in clutter at the moment because I have so much stuff and I'm not naturally tidy so even if I was super tidy I would be cluttered but I'm not tidy so it's even more cluttered than it probably even needs to be but if I had less stuff it would be less of an issue so it's, it's a mental health clutter aspect that's honestly the, the key issue I'm not going to go into certain things because I, I do as I say I want to make sure this channel is very much this is what it is this is what you can expect but I want to write for a living which is a big scary sentence for me to say but I'm working on a writing project at the moment I actually did a full month no buy in September last year which was including all these categories and I got so much writing done Um, I was so productive when I took out not just the amount of physical clutter that buying stuff all the time and owning loads of stuff brings to me but the mental clutter in my brain of the amount of my brain that was being used to think about stuff to buy and what I wanted to cover and what I was going to buy and planning purchases. It's mad how much that is taking up both the physical implements of it and the amount of time, energy and mental capacity I was putting into shopping. So doing that no buy in September I was so productive with my writing and see even if nothing ever comes of it and I never actually make a living doing it and I always have to do the kind of job I'm doing now but write on the side. I feel so much more content as a person when I'm writing but I'm quite anal and I like sitting at a desk and I like it to be quiet and when I'm in the house I currently, until literally today, can't write because until I would cleared off this area behind me I had no desk so I was having to use the desk downstairs with the computer which really stupidly leads into the conservatory and there's glass doors between the study and the conservatory and my grand watches his television in the conservatory and I can't stand it I can't focus my mind I like quiet so I know I, and I can't stand sitting in my bed writing on the laptop my neck gets sore my shoulders get sore it's not good and I was literally stopping myself from being able to be productive in the house because all of this space behind me used to have makeup and skincare all over it. So, you know, the amount of shit that I own is literally stopping me from achieving things I want to achieve. That's that's the key underpinning rule to all of this is it's not good for my mental health and it's literally blocking me from what I want to achieve in my life. It's stopping me from having the life that I want to have and that should be enough to make me not buy stuff and to stick to my budget. But I know when I am in the grips of wanting something, like it takes over. It's like a little demon gets in my mind and it's like, never mind all those reasons that you've come up with. Even though you know that they are important, what is important is buying these shoes. 
like that's going to make your life complete you won't need to write a book when you have these shoes because life's going to be so good the thing is it's not damaging now and that I'm not shopping the way I was where I thought I was going to be happy when I owned things but I do still get very sucked into how much better things will be when I own things. Not in the same way that I think everything is shit right now because I don't own it because that is where I was before when I was shopping in a really problematic way but it's like things are fine now but it'll be so much better when you own this and that needs to stop but it's not enough. If I've got the tiniest loophole to allow that little demon to take over I will take it. And I know I will take it. So that is why I had to have so many rules and boundaries in place around my spending for this year so that that little demon can get kicked out of my life completely. So I think that's probably it. This is going to be, have been so long, but thank you very much for watching if you have done. And yeah, if you are interested in content about no buys and budgeting and coping with that and learning how to live like that and the content that will come along with it, please do subscribe to my new channel and I will see you next Sunday. Bye.